Imagining how the earliest of our kind survived is surreal. We picture them scavenging for food and cowering from wild beasts, all the while donning little more than fur cloths. Our imaginations, however, don't often reveal how our ancestors snatched this fur in the first place. During the Pleistocene epic days, when saber-toothed tigers and woolly mammoths roamed the earth, their furs were peak fashion. And to get those iconic outfits, our early ancestors resorted to tactics archaeologists are just now uncovering. As it turns out, these experts are exposing a 4,000-year-old mammoth myth. Those giant woolly mammoths, which might as well be the equivalent of today's African elephants, are the recognizable icons of the Ice Age period, and their existence wasn't exactly an easy one. While woolies were known to eat the likes of buttercups and aquatic shrubs, they unfortunately were prime prey to several different animals. That was just the luck of the draw for those big, meaty herbivores. And while people were known to snack on these gentle giants, it was once thought to be a mild, pacifistic feast of sorts. What does that mean? Were they friends and food? Well, it was originally believed that humans would wait for mammoths to be maimed or deceased, or scared them into mucky swamps, before devouring them. Overall, the human-mammoth accord wasn't thought to be a violent one involving gore and bloodshed. In November 2019, Mexican archaeologists unveiled a strange finding they stumbled upon in the city of Tultepec, Estado de Mexico, pertaining to our meager knowledge of the wild woolly mammoths. The archaeologists, who were researchers from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, may have been the first to discover man-made pits created approximately 15,000 years ago to trap woolly mammoths. See, inside these two pits, the researchers found approximately 824 bones from at least 14 mammoths sprawled about. After long speculation of said skeletal remnants, the archaeologists came to the conclusion that these were hunting pits. These traps were about 5.5 feet deep and 82 feet in diameter, which had the researchers inferring that hunters had possibly used torches to back the fuzzy elephants into the pits, that is until they found peculiar markings on one of the ancient woolly skulls. On one of the woolly mammoth craniums, the researchers found indents caused by spear wounds, which indicates a more direct form of aggression toward these massive herbivores. Poor, helpless beasts, it represents a watershed, a touchstone for how we previously imagined groups of hunter-gatherers interacted with these enormous herbivores, stated Pedro Francisco Sanchez Nava, the National Archaeology Coordinator at the, the National Institute of Anthropology and History, INA. This is evidence of direct attacks on mammoths. In Tultepec we can see there was the intention to hunt and make use of the mammoths, Luis Cordova Baradas, the head of the five-person excavation team, stated. But the very first signs of these mammoth death traps came to light in January 2019, as the land was excavated for 10 months with intent for it to become a landfill. This was before anyone knew it was holding woolly mammoth leftovers. Cordova Baradas explained that back when the traps were built, there must have been at least six herds of mammoths roaming the land. Why is that important? Well, further digging expeditions in the area could unveil even more mammoth pits. Interestingly, the bones weren't randomly spread out, they were seemingly symbolically organized. They must have considered it brave and ferocious, showing their respect with this particular arrangement, said Cordova Baradas. Perhaps it was a woolly shrine. Though the discovery was an exciting one for the researchers, Cordova Baradas made it clear that there was still much to research about the mammoth remains, as they were unsure of how hunters possibly made use of the colossal bones. Their questioning specifically pertained to the mammoth shoulder blades, as for some reason, the pit only included right shoulder blades. The left shoulder blades are missing, why? Cordova Baradas asked, clearly intrigued. While they had a long road of research ahead of them, Smithsonian Magazine explained that experts have theorized that mammoth rib bones were used to cut away the meat. And since skulls were left flipped upside down, it's possible that hunters would gobble mammoth tongues. But aside from the array of mammoth bones, the archaeologists also identified pieces from a jawbone and spine of a camel, as well as a horse's tooth, in the area. This had Adam N. Runtry of the Museum of Paleontology at the University of Michigan suspicious. In an interview with the New York Times, Runtry stated that there has been debate about whether the remains represent hunted animals or scavenged natural deaths, clearly dismantling the belief regarding aggressive mammoth attacks. So the pits don't necessarily exhibit the remnants of spiritual mammoth sacrifices. While we may never know for sure how those hungry Neanderthals interacted with the elephant-like mammals, astonishing research has revealed much about the woolly mammoth's baffling extinction. To be frank, the fall of this gentle beast is disquieting. When we think of the woolly mammoths crossing the Arctic, they feel too far out of reach to even imagine. 
While the last woolly gave up the ghost thousands of years ago, their needs were quite similar to the needs of present-day herbivores. However, there's lot we didn't know about these monstrous mammals. Most of the woolly mammoths called the Arctic's mainland to be home, but a group of them resided elsewhere. Wrangell Island, just off the coast of eastern Siberia, held a bundle of woolly mammoths, and for one reason or another, which we'll get to, they outlived the woolies living in the Arctic mainland. There was something special happening on Wrangell Island. In fact, this was no fluke. The Wrangell Island mammoths outlived the mainland mammoths by 7,000 years. What's even crazier is that the island woolies died off just 4,000 years ago. Let's put that in perspective. The last of the woolly mammoths went extinct after the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids at Giza, which contradicts what scientists had once thought. But how? Well, research done by Laura Arpe, of the Finnish Museum of Natural History, and her colleagues digs deeper into the mysterious survival and extinction of the island mammoths. They were determined to find out what catastrophic event destroyed this fascinating species. Using mammoth teeth and bones found on the island, they detected the nature of the group's diet, nutrition, and metabolism. They then analyzed their carbon and nitrogen isotopes, which help interpret the nutrition and metabolic functioning of the woolies prior to their extinction. A 2017 study showed that a genomic meltdown induced the demise of the woolly mammoths as the species experienced mutations that caused severe problems. They couldn't synthesize proteins, which caused a loss of smell, for instance. Laura found something different. While the 2017 study, which was published in PLOS, offered a complex, seemingly plausible scenario, Laura's findings exhibit that something much simpler led to the extinction of these graceful beasts. Laura's research began with examining the dietary well-being of the Wrangell Island mammoths in order to gauge a potential lack in resources. Based on this, Laura found no alarming long-term changes in habitat or climate. No one had looked at what was going on with the dietary ecology of the Wrangellian mammoths, and with all these other observations related to diet, it was high time to do so, Laura said. Judged from the numbers of radiocarbon-dated mammoth bone finds on Wrangell Island, this last island population appears to have vanished rather abruptly, she continued. This had Laura perplexed, so she and her team were on the woolly case. And since major changes in climate and range reduction happened way before the mammoths went extinct, approximately 4,000 to 6,000 years prior, it likely had nothing to do with their fateful collapse. So, again, what exactly happened to these island guys 4,000 years ago? Well, though it wasn't related to climate change, the evils of Mother Nature still could have caused mass starvation via icing events. When rain on snow created a hard, icy ground, it became impenetrable to the poor, hungry woolly mammoths, who needed to eat their greens and other nutritious plants, such as poppies, buttercups, and anemones. Though the dietary well-being of the Wrangell Island mammoths was nearly the same as that of the Siberian mammoths, the island mammoths had one superior trait, a trait that could explain their extended survival. The island mammoths used their fat reserves during freezing winters, and the Siberian mammoths didn't. But unfortunately, the fat reserves didn't save the island mammoths from the icing events. In fact, these icing events affected a plethora of Arctic herbivores. 20,000 musk oxen were starved to death in 2003 in the Canadian Arctic due to a rain-on-snow event, Laura relayed. While Laura and her team thoroughly believe the icing events acted as the beginning of the end for the mammoths, they also suspect there could have been a lack of healthy fresh water. Next, Laura and her team aim to study the water quality to either reject or confirm the hypothesis that the drinking water supply of the animals had high levels of harmful or even toxic elements released from the local bedrock. Right now, it's still a mystery. While Laura and her team discovered a brilliant anomaly in the world of Arctic research, the true reason behind the woolly mammoth's extinction may forever be an enigma. Meanwhile, one of her contemporaries was focused on uncovering the truth about another mysterious extinction. Most people would consider a preoccupation with bones concerning, though Robert De Palma's love of the dead and buried is anything but peculiar. An aspiring paleontologist, the 37-year-old managed to turn his lifelong passion into a curator position for the Palm Beach Museum of Natural History. But De Palma is perhaps best known for the widely publicized discovery he made near Bowman, North Dakota, in 2012. After receiving a tip from a private fossil collector, De Palma and his team began excavating a site along the well-known Hell Creek Formation. Initially, De Palma felt the site, dubbed Tanis, had little promise, something the collector had made him privy to prior to the excavation. However, after returning to Tanis in 2013, the paleontologist discovered there was more to this unassuming patch of rock than met the eye. Just a few meters below the surface, 
De Palma discovered a host of rare and unusual fossils, including those of species he claimed to have never seen before. It was an incredible find, though one set of bones in particular caught De Palma's eye, and left him positively stumped. Beneath the skeleton of a freshwater paddlefish, De Palma discovered the tooth of a mosasaur, an enormous reptilian predator that made its home in the oceans of the early Cretaceous period. This puzzled De Palma and his team, for there was no way this creature could have existed in the fresh waters of prehistoric North Dakota. The layout of the find was also unusual, the fossils deposited haphazardly and some skeletons even buried vertically in the dirt. Combined with the fact that tektites, small bits of natural glass created from meteor impacts, were also present, everyone was left scratching their head. Then, a light bulb went off. Could the tektite fragments found in the Tanis deposit have been scattered here by the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs? While some researchers would be quick to accept such a theory, the plausibility of this scenario isn't exactly cut and dry. The widely held belief that an asteroid impact caused the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event is primarily based on the presence of the KT layer. This 66 million year old band of Earth stretches over nearly the entire globe and contains a high level of iridium, an element primarily found in asteroids. This theory is also supported by the Chicxulub crater, a 112 mile impression in the Yucatan Peninsula that contains the same mineral makeup as the KT layer. Therefore, most scientists assume that the asteroid that created this crater scattered the iridium debris that ultimately wiped out the dinosaurs. If this were the case, then, one would expect to find plenty of fossils in the KT layer. After all, it was during this time that nearly all life on Earth went extinct. However, this actually isn't true at all, hardly any fossils have ever been found in this layer of rock. In fact, most fossils are found about 10 feet below the KT layer, which, geologically speaking, would amount to thousands of years between the death of these creatures and the fateful asteroid impact. Therefore, it seems highly unlikely that an extraterrestrial object reduced every last dinosaur to rubble. Proponents of this alternate theory do still believe that an asteroid impact finished off the last of these prehistoric creatures, though they propose that factors like large-scale volcanic activity and climate change had already wiped out most of the dinosaurs by this point. However, according to De Palma, the Tanis find was the key to finally putting this debate to bed. Not only were the fossils he discovered located within the KT layer, but their haphazard placement suggested they were deposited here just moments after the asteroid struck. With this information in mind, De Palma posited that the mile-high tsunamis created by the impact must have traveled up river valleys and into freshwater bodies, which is how the Mosasaur tooth came to be here. This was big news. Eager to share his discovery with the world, De Palma sat down with the New Yorker to share the exclusive details of his historic find. However, as soon as the story broke in April 2019, the paleontology community grew outraged. Many of De Palma's colleagues were upset that the paleontologist had chosen to share his story with the New Yorker instead of a reputable scientific journal. De Palma later published his discovery in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, though many felt this account was significantly less detailed than his New Yorker piece. Even prior to this, however, De Palma was considered by some to be a controversial figure in the world of paleontology. In 2015, he introduced a new species of dinosaur he'd recovered from the Hell Creek Formation dubbed Decoderaptor, though after presenting the completed skeleton, it was discovered one of the bones belonged to a turtle. De Palma also stirred up controversy with his business practices, as he retains all control of his specimens even after they've been placed in museums and university collections. He also reportedly funds his fieldwork by creating replicas of his finds and selling them to private collectors. But the strangest discrepancy of all may be De Palma's record of the discovery itself. While the paleontologist and his team have made claims about the large number of dinosaur fossils uncovered near the surface of the Tanis deposit, his article in PNAS only mentions one example in a supplementary document. As of now, additional papers on Tanis are being prepared that will hopefully clear up the confusion surrounding De Palma's find. Until then, one can only wonder if De Palma's discovery will truly change history or simply wind up as the fabrication of another would-be hero in search of fame and glory.